Oldisleben Farming is a large farm business in the north of Thuringia, which farms both organically and conventionally. In this series of short films, we follow all the farm's fieldwork for the 2020 season and introduce the business in more depth. In part four, we focus on maize harvesting, among other activities. In previous short films, we've already seen that Oldisleben farming tends not to rely on run-of-the-mill vehicles or farm machinery in many aspects of its arable farming activities. For the past three years, they've had a great experience with various machinery from the Russian manufacturer Rostelmash. However, to add a touch more power to their chopping machinery, they invested in a new RSM F2650 in September 2020. The three-year-old RSM 1403 will stay on the farm as a secondary machine to tackle the 2,400 hectares of land that they have to chop. At 611 horsepower, the new RSM F2650 certainly provides an extra boost in performance. The forage harvester is powered by a 15.6-litre MTU six-cylinder engine, which, by the way, is the same you'll find in a class Jaguar 870. Other components by Western suppliers can be found in the RSM's drive unit and steering. Marcus Hircher is managing director and owner of Aldisleben Farming. When purchasing new machinery for his large farm, he has increasingly trawled the market in recent years to find less well-known brands with excellent value for money. The fact that the Russian farm machinery manufacturer Rostelmash sells such large quantities in its home country and countries such as the Czech Republic and Poland was just one of the reasons he decided to invest in this brand. According to the company's own figures, Rostelmash has now built over 3 million combines since it began. That's possibly more than any other manufacturer in this sector. Marcus Helcher is even going one step further and is now working with the German branch of Rostelmash to set up the distribution of their farm machinery in central and eastern German states. He is convinced that the longevity and excellent value for money the farm machinery offers will appeal to many farm managers. See the contact details on screen now for more information on Rostelmash sales and demonstration opportunities. Before we head back to take a look at the maize harvest, let's have a quick look at the other field work that is scheduled for the Oldisleben team in September. First of all, let's tag along with new team member Michael. His job will be to organize the outdoor work and assist the crop manager. At the beginning of September, they're almost done with sowing canola. From an arable point of view, they're hedging their bets this way because if the plants develop enough leaves in autumn, they should provide a good yield the following year. Marcel is at work here with the brand new 9-meter Amazon EDX. A precision air seeder is the best tool for achieving the targeted seed rate of 40 grains per square meter. Canola is sown at Aldisleben with a row spacing of 45 centimeters. The seed is located in the two smaller containers above the cultivar. Mineral fertilizer is carried along in the large tank at the front and slotted in next to the seed furrow. Over half the 3,700 hectares of farmland owned by Aldisleben Farming has been farmed organically for over 20 years. Even the farm's second largest field, spanning 120 hectares on the outskirts of Bad Frankenhausen, 
is farmed without the use of plant protection or mineral fertilizer products. Lucerne had previously been grown on this field for three years. Now, due to declining yields, the sequence is being interrupted as planned to grow cereals for propagation as the next crop in the rotation. The lucerne is rooted up to five meters deep in some places. To break up even just the seed layer is no mean feat. Ulf has arrived with a quad track and a 12 meter Horsch Tirano. To create the seed bed before sowing, a total of four passes are required. For the first pass, they used a massive 19-ton disc harrow. During the second and third passes, the aim is to pull out the final root balls using the Tirano. After that, the field is leveled and the seed bed is prepared. A lot of mechanical work is required because chemical products are taboo on this organic field. Bad Frankenhausen can be seen in the background of these shots, around 10 kilometers from the Oldisleben farm. It's hard to miss the Panorama Museum, seated high above the town. The tower of the Oberkirche Church also catches the eye. This tower is even more crooked than the leaning tower of Pisa. We are now just south of the Kaifhauser Hills. It's a small range of hills up to 470 meters in height that can be seen in much of the camera footage we've taken in the area this year. The fields belonging to Aldisleben farming are often very large, but also tend to be very hilly. One impressive example of this is the fields located in the beautiful Schmucke Hills to the east of the farm premises. Even Clements is enjoying the great view into the distance from his cab today. He's working with the versatile Delta Track and Horsch Tiger. The farm manager's son is still at school, but he's crazy about farming and helps out the team when he can during his free time. In the previous short film, we saw the team cultivating the stubble right after the grain harvest. The volunteer cereals have now germinated and are being incorporated in this second pass of stubble cultivation. Next up will be the seed drill to sow spelt on this field for next year's crop. A quick pit stop in Grossleben. Over on this field, they're mulching sunflower stubble. There's nothing particularly special about the job, but at 150 hectares, this is Aldisleben Farming's biggest field. The 10-year-old mulcher is earmarked to be replaced by a newer, wider machine next year. Now let's go back to the maize harvest. In the meantime, driver Jens has changed fields and the work is progressing well. The RSM F2650 is equipped with a 10-row Kemper header. Aside from the all-wheel drive option, this machine has virtually all the added extras, including a big 1,500-litre fuel tank and a silage additive system. Without the header, a 600-horsepower chopper like this costs around €260,000 before tax. Seven and a half meters of maize go through the chopper as it drives along. The target cutting length of the 48 blade drum can be set between four and 22 millimeters straight from the cab. For beef cattle, the maize is chopped at 11 millimeters to retain the crude fiber content. Back on the farm, the chopped maize is tipped into silage clamps right next to the cattle sheds. It is then spread out and compacted by two tractors.
The yield per hectare is around average this year. At the end of the day, despite the farm's location in the driest part of Germany, they've produced around 40 tons. As the evening draws in, the team is getting started on the same supersized field where we filmed them sowing in spring. It's almost two kilometers from one headland to the other. And now we've come to the end of part four in our short film series on Aldisleben farming. We still have one more video in the works from the 2020 season. You can watch our independent documentaries on farm businesses in Russia, Europe and North and South America on www.farmworld.tv. It's definitely worth taking a look. <laughs>